Okay. So this is a constraint optimization problem. The number of possible packing is very large, could be complex. Uh, the, this, the density, the packing fraction can be uh, very different by very tiny amounts. So it's also computationally demanding. Proof of optimality is uh, very hard to obtain. So the, uh, as far as I know, the largest n in the square for which a, a proof of optimality, optimality exists is 32. And uh, of course, there is an upper bound to the, to the density, which is given by the density in, in space, uh, <clears throat> e over square root of 20. Okay, uh, how does the algorithm of normal Ostergaard works? It works by um, throwing uh, n points at random in the square. And this point, the algorithm doesn't work actually with this, it works with points. This point represents the center of, the, of your disk. So these points are parameterized in a uh, simple way, like in terms of two angles, P and U. And they are dealt with like uh, charges, point charges, which have some kind of interaction energy. So they interact with the, uh, with the potential of the kind of one over R to the S. S is a parameter in the mode in this algorithm, which starts to be at the beginning is kind of small, around five, 10. And then as the algorithm uh, uh, advances, it gets larger and larger. So effectively, uh, when, when, uh, when the algorithm finishes, S can be as large as of one million, okay? And at that time, the interaction becomes a point, a contact interaction. Um, uh, each time uh, the algorithm is applied, a new, new equilibrium configuration is reached, and then uh, as it changes, a new configuration is reached, and one advances. At the end, uh, only if you improve the density, the new configuration is updated. Okay, so this is an example. You have, as you can see, you have two, essentially two domains, two squares. The red squares, the red square is the square in which the uh, algorithm works. It contains the centers of the disk. The blue square is actually the container. So in this algorithm, the very important point, in this algorithm, you don't fix the container, you fix the container of the centers, okay? So this would be the optimal arrangement of seven uh, congruent disks in the square. So mm, by applying this algorithm as we did, we managed to convert it in an unconstrained minimization problem, which is already good because it's easier to, to attack. Uh, as I told you, one doesn't work with disk, uh, but with points. And uh, um, one important point, is there a point that there is. Uh, there is. It is. Okay. Oh, yeah. But, okay. And uh, in, in, in the early stages of the algorithm, when the interaction is long range, you can you could actually uh, have cases in which too many points are deposited on the border, and that would be bad. Because if you if your configuration has too many points on the border, it cannot be a, a good uh, a good uh, a configuration. Okay, so this is a, a important aspect to take into account. So uh, with uh, a student of mine, we actually um, modify a little, a little bit the algorithm to take into account its uh, shortcoming. So essentially. Uh, we modified the interaction with the extra term. This extra term is a border repulsion term that in the first stages of the algorithm doesn't allow, the border is repulsive, so doesn't allow too many charges to go to the border. And that actually uh, is good because it increases the probability of uh, reaching higher density configuration. So this is some experiment we did with both the original algorithm and with the modified algorithm. This uh, orange uh, uh, histogram corresponds to the modified algorithm, while this blue one is the original algorithm of Urmela Ostegar. And honestly, I don't remember the red one, but it's uh, okay. So the probability uh, of, uh, as you can see, the probability of uh, generating 
high uh, density configuration increases quite a lot. And uh, uh, essentially, this is advantageous computation. So apart from that, this algorithm is kind of lengthy because each time you do, uh, you start with a completely random configuration, you grow it, you eventually you land in something dense. But even when you uh, have already a well-formed configuration, you can do uh, something else, which is much less uh, heavy computationally, which is essentially perturbing, shaking your configuration, trying to see with repeated application if you can find a much denser configuration. That actually worked, for example, in this case. This is, a, this is the configuration that comes in Pacomania for 3,000 particles, if you have 3,000 circles. And this is the configuration that uh, could be obtained with, uh, with this shaking algorithm, which is slightly denser, a little bit. Uh, okay. So now I would like to explain you uh, what, uh, um, uh, what goes wrong with the algorithm if one wants to deal with general uh, domains. So uh, the algorithm doesn't work with the fixed container. So, Essentially, uh, the algorithm works with the container of the center of the disk, not with the whole container. The center of the disk are uh, in this blue, red uh, square, and the size of the disk is only determined at the end of the, of the process. So you don't know what the container, what the dimension of the container are until you end the process. Um, so as you can see from this plot, from this figure, the algorithm can work only if the blue and the red on the domains are related by a scale transformation. If the two domains are not related by a scale transformation, you cannot apply it because you are changing the problem as the algorithm evolves, and therefore you cannot do it for any domain. So, um, so if you if we have chosen an, an ellipse, okay, the I think I reverted the colors, but this would be the container of the or the center of the disk, and this could be the container of the whole disk. And you can see that the the red and the blue, uh, the red and the blue uh, domains are not related by a scale transformation, and therefore I cannot really apply the algorithm as it is. Okay, so it can be applied to very special domains. Uh, for example, regular polygons. The regular polygons, I do retain the property, and therefore I can uh, work with them. Essentially, this is something that I did, uh, essentially adapted the algorithm to work with regular polygons or an arbitrary uh, number of sites. It works the very same way. Essentially, you have uh, the container of the center of the disk and the larger container of the disk themselves, and you apply, as I explained it even before, with or without the border repulsion. And uh, essentially, you can uh, uh, obtain numerically uh, the, the packing fraction for this, uh, for this uh, uh, configuration, packing configuration. Of course, all the configuration that one uh, uh, calculates have to satisfy and uh, be consistent with uh, uh, all the theory of topology. In terms of uh, topological charges, we will have that uh, the sum of the uh, internal uh, topological charges plus the external topological charges, fellow border topological charges, plus the topologi topological charges carried by the vertices has to be six. Uh, with uh, simple, um, well, the, these charges are given by this uh, expression. Essentially, the vertices, there are configurations that have vertices with more than three legs. In that case, those vertices carry a topological charge as well. So this would be an example. This is a, a very nice uh, uh, symmetric packing in a hexagon. And uh, as you can see, you have uh, four legs vertices in these points, okay? okay. This is just uh, some, some configuration that were calculated for uh, the dodecagon. Okay, and these are the corresponding uh, topological bottom of the diagrams. Okay, uh, for the equilateral, there are two very special domains, the uh, equilateral triangle and the hexagon. For this, um, 
domains, uh, uh, there are um, very special configuration uh, that actually have a perfect uh, triangular parking. Uh, and besides, Graham and Lubachewski uh, already discovered for the case of the uh, equilateral triangle that other eight families of, uh, of symmetric uh, recurring uh, uh, configuration in, uh, in, the, in the triangle. Uh, um, yeah. This. So these are some examples of uh, uh, perfect packing in the equilateral triangle and similar configuration in the hexagon. Okay. Okay. Uh, I've done a lot of uh, computational work, uh, calculating, uh, letting the program run, and calculating all kind of configuration. These are uh, for. Uh, uh, triangle, square, hexagon, and dodecagon. As you can see, there are sharp peaks. These peaks typically correspond to one of the uh, these very symmetric uh, configurations. Uh, for um, in this case, is uh, for uh, a regular polygon with even number of sides, the dodecagon, the cagon, and so on and so forth. Similar uh, behaviors is seen, and also for all. Okay, I would actually skip on this. One of the things that also is curiosity that can be discussed is the fact that some of the configuration are actually uh, necklaces, meaning that you can actually make a traveling assessment problem on this uh, on this configuration, and if the length of the of the length of the path is just n times the diameter, that's actually what they call a necklace. And uh, these are very special configuration. For example, the curved hexagonal packing configuration are normally necklaces, but there are also other ones. For example, I think this one, well, both are not the curved hexagonal packing. So this is a list of the configurations that I found that are actually necklaces. They are kind of uh, very much more common in the equilateral triangle and in the hexagon. They are not so common in general. Uh, you have some, some kind of peak in the dodecagon because the dodecagon has this curved hexagonal packing, but otherwise they are not very common. Uh, they become a little bit more common in uh, higher dimension. I did some uh, numerical experiment on uh, uh, packing uh, uh, spheres in a cube in three dimension and a higher dimension. And that could probably be explained by the fact that the piece in number is higher, so it's larger. So you have more probability of arranging uh, sphere back to back. So curve hexagonal packing is what I of last week, as I won't say much, but I, I will just remember that there are configurations very special in a uh, regular polygon with uh, a number of sides, which is multiple of six. The first interesting one is the dodecagon for uh, uh, a number of uh, disks, which is essentially an hexagonal number. Uh, there are these configurations that have uh, invariance with respect to rotation of P over three, and uh, uh, they last up to some end, and then they actually are uh, won by configuration that are no even. So now, uh, the idea, uh, well, the purpose uh, of what I did was to try to find uh, a modification of the library that could allow to deal with completely arbitrary domain within this algorithm. So, um, only the circle, the square, and the other uh, regular polygons have been uh, dealt with the algorithm of Mela Ostergaard. But um, the basic problem is that uh, you don't work with a fixed container; you work with a container for for the for the center of the disk, and everything is lost if the container and the inner container are not related by a scale transformation. So how? can we actually implement the algorithm in more general cases? The idea is to use image charges. So it's from the, this very nice idea from electrodynamics that you can solve a difficult problem in electrodynamics with a very simple idea of putting an image charge in a, in a suitable position. So essentially what one needs to do is to identify a, proper 
images to when you have a, a, a sphere or a disk in a certain position close to the border, you have to identify a, a image disk to this disk, this, this one disk. And uh, the image disk will interact with the original disk only, not with the other one, and will force this disk not to cross the boundary. So uh, essentially, you need to adapt the functional in the algorithm to contain not only the interaction between internal points, but also the interaction between the internal points and the corresponding image uh, points. If one does this, uh, it can actually uh, can actually work with a completely arbitrary domain. So this is a very arbitrary domain that uh, we devised. Essentially, at the at the first stage of the algorithm, you put the points randomly, and uh, each point has typically only one in this condition one uh, image disk. This disk will only interact with this other disk and so on and so forth, okay? As the algorithm evolves with the same algorithm, but uh, same procedure, it will end up equally land in a sum denser configuration in which now you can see there are at least two disks that have a double image because of the particular position in which they land. So essentially, we solve the problem that uh, you cannot have uh, an arbitrary domain, here you can, because you actually, in this way, you actually fix the container. You don't have to, to worry anymore. And the idea can also be brought to a higher dimension because in higher dimension works uh, the very same way. So this is a cylinder. You just have to make sure, uh, this would be a cylinder which, which has a, a lead, a, a wall at the top and the wall at the bottom. So, this charge here that is very close to the top has its own image charge over here because the image charge corresponds correspond to the closest uh, uh, charge uh, from the other side of the border. So, uh, and while the other ones that are closer to the lateral side have a, a lateral image charge. One thing that could be done, I think I didn't think too much, but I think can be done, would be also implementing periodic boundary condition, but in that case uh, would require to have the image charge brought on the other side of the of the cylinder. Okay. And of course it could be a doesn't need to be a regular cylinder, it can be a cylinder of any shape. Okay. So I have a lot of uh, numerical results to to show essentially uh, all kind of experiment that we did. So this, this is one of these experiments. We try with a configuration, well-formed configuration for the square. This is a well-known configuration. And we start 60, 60 circles in the square. We start stretching the, the square. So as you stretch the square, you get two rectangles. This is the proportion of the largest side and you have a side of one and the other side of length A. As you stretch it, you, you see that you have peaks in the, in the, in the density, in the packing fraction. So some of these peaks I have here. So the, it started with a configuration not too well packed because it didn't allow a very good uh, uh, hexagonal packing. But as you stretch, you may hit a, particularly good proportion that allows you to essentially reach hexagonal packing. And uh, these are uh, the corresponding Voronoi diagrams. So uh, these are other peaks for the same uh, uh, problem. 120 is also very interesting because uh, 120 is a particularly good configuration in the square. So it makes sense. This is the 120 configuration. It makes sense to look at the other maximum. So this is another maximum that occurs at 119, but then you have more, okay? So these are rectangles. Rectangles may be less interesting because they have been already well covered in the literature, but this was done essentially to prove that the algorithm works. Now, another experiment we did is with the cross, okay? So you start with a square, with 49 uh, uh, this, which is actually the one that Normella and Ostergar proved it, it has, doesn't have a, a square packing. And you start stretching 
uh, arms out of the square. So uh, A is the uh, length of the arm that come out of the square, and you see that you actually get peaks in the density. So some of these peaks are here. Uh, apparently, at certain uh, particular uh, dimensions, there are very symmetric uh, configurations that pop out. This one is a, corresponded to a local peak in the density, not particularly high, doesn't have doesn't have doesn't look to have a very special symmetry, but this one and this one do have uh, symmetry, right? And essentially, the idea is that you may uh, gain a lot of density if you manage to reach hexagonal packing on the arm, even though you lose some kind of uh, packing fraction in this region because that region is not very well packed. These are mm, the coronary diagram. Another example that we dealt with is uh, the cardio. You can do the cardio as, as well. The cardio, cardio that has the particularity that uh, has a put. Uh, so it's something that I haven't seen uh, uh, dealt with in the literature. I didn't see this profile, not even the cross, but essentially you can, you can run the algorithm for this. Um, uh, it has... Uh, these, these configurations should be relatively good, but of course there is a caveat because it's very hard to find a really good candidate for global maximum of the packing fraction. We didn't run so many um, uh, times the algorithm to be sure that we are close enough, but uh, this is the status. This one is a certainly not so good configuration because it were, was reached with only one iteration. It was meant to, to deal with a very large N. And we also looked at the formation of a circle into a cardioid. So you start with a circle and you little by little continuously uh, change a parameter and see uh, at the end, if you, well, at the end you end up with a cardioid. So this is what happens in this experiment to the packing fraction, the packing fraction decays. For some reason, it, it ends up uh, very close to the packing fraction of a square packing. And these are some of the configuration that you, you end up with. One interesting thing, this is 37. 37 is the hexagonal number, so you will have current hexagonal packing. One of the things that we see in the very first stages, this is a perfect circle, but in the very first stages, it looks like exact curve hexagonal packing still survive, although you have a small deformation of the circle. So this, that was some kind of curve. Uh, this is the Voronoi structure. The, another example, uh, maybe I maybe I don't know, but I don't haven't seen an example of in packing in annulus, but we consider an annulus, uh, concentric annulus with a circular uh, profile. And uh, uh, we started changing the inner, the radius of the inner circle. So this is actually what happens for 90. 91 would be an hexagonal number. 90 uh, uh, is, is also hexagonal because uh, this is, this is the side of the, the inner disk. When the size of the inner disk uh, matches uh, the size of this disk, you have current hexagonal packing. Actually, you have it also for a smaller disk. Then, uh, eventually, you lose the symmetry, but then eventually you recuperate the symmetry at higher uh, sizes. And this is how the, uh, these um, domains, these Voronoi diagrams look like. These are other two maxima as well, still enlarging the disk. You lose the symmetry, eventually you recuperate it. Um, one interesting thing is that the total topological charge in this domain is zero, as you can see uh, easily because these are all pentagons, uh, so they don't carry any topological charge. Um, and you can study uh, much larger configuration as well. So this is, I would like to show, let's see if I can alt up. No, no, that people, ah. people. Ah. 
So yeah, this is a actually small movie that shows the evolution of a circle to a cardioid for 37. So the Borland diagrams. I think I can put the larger one, the larger one. The candle's low because uh, we, we wanted to, to have time to appreciate the changes in uh, the volume and structure. These are these alleles? Could you shake these in a sense that you described earlier? Are these just no? These these are uh, yes. These have three processes inside. One is uh, if you, for example, now you are for you are deforming, for example, a square to into a rectangle of different proportions. So the first step is use the, the configuration that you had for the previous case and let it evolve. Then you apply the algorithm as I explained, then you apply uh, also the shape. So there are three and sometimes you manage the two group. Normally we did uh, like 20, 30 or 40 uh, runs, but of course it could be done better. So this is meant essentially to to see to show that the, the idea is working. So let me go back. Okay. Oh, so uh, the other um, case that we consider is an ellipse with a circular pole. So, and the circular hole can be moved inside the domain. So, it's the very same thing. Uh, you can actually work with this domain, or you can move the leaves, and as you uh, move the disk, and as you move it, of course, the density is going to change. So, uh, I would like to draw my conclusions. The algorithm uh, that we have, in principle, could work in uh, for arbitrary domain in the plane, but also in higher dimension. Essentially, uh, as long as it's going to be heavier because it requires to calculate a shift at each stage uh, image charge, and uh, that is computationally a little bit heavier. Uh, of course, for this kind of problem, finding a global minimum is really tough. So you have to have patience and run the program a lot of time. Uh, one nice thing is that uh, even in domains uh, that, are, mm, that are not the hexagon or the uh, equilateral triangle, you still find a very symmetric configuration if you hit the right uh, proportion. Um, the boron structure of the configuration is particular in the sense that you could have higher order uh, vertices, so with more than three legs. One other thing is that if you cut more than one hole, you could have the topological charge to become negative, which you would also, we didn't do that, but it would uh, make appear uh, cells of different shape, probably more heptagons. Um, so also the fact that uh, uh, necklaces are uh, kind of rare, that's uh, a curiosity. Um, we have a lot of uh, graphs and configuration in a supplemental material if somebody is uh, interested. And uh, I would like also to uh, thank my students that helped me to devise this algorithm. And that's, I think, the end of the game. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have some questions, please. Okay. So that's thank you for that. I'm just thinking uh, so kind of possibilities for extending something like this to kind of controls binary sizes. Um, I'm not sure about that because uh, uh, you, you see one thing is that you work with point charges. 
I haven't explored the idea of working with uh, charges of different size. Okay, that would be maybe one idea, but I I, I don't know if it would work. And I don't think it, anything has been done with this particular algorithm that says one thing that I, I naively think is that you could work with uh, you could enforce periodic boundary conditions uh, both in the plane or in uh, in higher dimension because the idea would be that instead of looking to the image charges that they on, is on the other side of the border you look for example if you are in the cylinder close to this edge you project, project it down, down there that will help you to find periodic structure I think and what about sort of integrating along the charges along a curve to get uh, like a line right yeah I don't know get sort of a, it would be a it would be a circle uh -huh. but it would be some some kind of yeah probably the, this was a summer project with my student so it's why we we'll just finish it uh, we have to submit it in the state Excellent. um necklaces this just means everything is touching yes. or is it yes. also in your part? no 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 well, yes, it's a traveling sentiment problem where every disc is touching an area and going to a disc only once. Sorry. Hi. Hi. To comment on the tracks question, can we have fully dispersed structures? I guess we have to build the landscape with potential. So the cooler potential does not only, but maybe we could have. Uh, uh, an exponential with a decay lines uh, on top of Coulomb to get it a long range order or something like that. Do you think this is feasible or? I will be sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. What makes you think of the Coulomb potential as a starting point? Oh, you, you, you don't need to work with the Coulomb potential at the beginning. You would just work with the long range potential because at the beginning you have a completely random configuration and you need long range to put some order. And then as you advance, you get to close, uh, short and shorter range. At the very end, uh, you could have an exponent like one million, 10 million. So it's really contact interaction. Uh, these are hard disks. Yeah. 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 That's a novice question. Then. Uh, the, this image chart uh, algorithm can that come with um, uh, arbitrary concave boundaries? Well, I suppose so. I mean, uh, I suppose so, but uh, uh, because I don't naively, I don't see any restriction. And my my question would be: if you have a concave corner, uh, uh -huh. and of course the strip of the disk inside could touch that corner, but the corresponding image is. Could attach the corner. That's something that. Oh, okay. let's see. What kind of domain you are thinking of? Like I'm thinking of your like uh, what, what was it, the bubble uh, shape? Uh, uh, yeah. And this, yeah. Yes. Uh, and at that uh, concave point, uh, if you place the disk inside, uh -huh. then the image charge for it uh, would be far outside, right? But that, that's not that would that be a problem. No, I mean, uh, one important point is that the image charge just interacts with its, uh, its corresponding charge, it doesn't interact with any other charge. So that's one point. And uh, if I have if I have the original charge here, the other charge in my chart will be here, but that's not the problem. The the image charge can be in or out the domain, doesn't matter. Maybe as a point of implementation, this is work better if you have kind of explicit representation of your boundary. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That, yeah, you have some kind of parametric uh, expression for your boundary and you want it. But essentially, in, in what you reach is that you really work with the fixed size container. The container is not changing as you advance the algorithm as it would be in the original algorithm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
version of the algorithm. Right? It doesn't come. What's the, uh, just, I think it's was probably good because it's certainly a fairly naive question. But what's the meaning of the S? Like, why do you ratchet up the power? Is that, that sort of puts the emphasis on the biggest term? Right, so it's trying to make all the terms out. The more you do that, the more yeah. The see, has, let me see, let me go back to the expression. So you were yeah. referring to it. So this I didn't tell you, uh, but this lambda there is a parameter that is updated at each uh, step. And it corresponds to the minimum uh, square distance as between any two pairs in the configuration. So essentially, if you are, if, if you find the uh, two charges that are at a smaller distance at one point, at a smaller distance at that, it will correspond to a very strong repulsion. And as it starts small, small being not necessarily one, it can be five, six, you have enough long range to set an order in your domain. And eventually it ends in one million, ten million. So, so when it goes there, it really you are, you are really working with hard disks at that point. Meaning that the distance between them are very constrained. Yes, and you cannot overlap because it is, as soon as they have a small overlap, they would uh, repel terribly. Okay. Um, I I, it might, I, I suppose it's just a very special case. Maybe it's not an The sort of opposite to the question that came before about the party on it. If your boundary is has the same curvature as the circle, you need one limit charge per contact because it's so sort of fitting. So, what point. kind of boundary you are thinking about? So, supposing that, as it were, the sort of the, the cheek of the cardioid, as it were, was the same radius, had the same radius of curvature. Oh, well. So, uh, okay. So, supposing you had a, a, a square with, um, with rounded quarters. Okay. That had a radius in the range corner, you had the radius of curvature of the circles at some density. Some density. That's not the problem. Okay, it wouldn't be. No, I didn't mean. see any problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, where'd you put the image charge? You said? Yeah, if you have a square with round rounded corner, it will work the same way. So let's see. This is the square. Imagine that you have a rounded corner. Imagine that you are here. You have to. Essentially, start moving around and find the closest distance but to the border. This point is a room with closest distance. Yes, yes. You are, and so, for example, in this case, suppose it's here, and that, that would be well. Well, you have to do something else. I'm drawing it like this, but you you have to take you have to check what is the distance of the chart to the border, and then compare it with the minimum distance among points among themselves because what is going to actually be the radius of the disk is going to be the minimum of the two okay so you have to check first in the basic algorithm you just check the minimal distance among the internal points okay but now you also have to check if this minimal distance that you calculated between internal points is larger or smaller than the distance of any uh, charge to this image and you get the mean and the left of the two is the full one. So that's the procedure. It all seems although I don't know where to put the yeah. image charges when you have something with the same curvature as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you will have a point which has the sh shorter distance. Oh, you mean if you are exactly in the center of the okay, yeah, that would be a very special point. Yeah, yeah, uh, you don't understand the question. But in the end, it wouldn't matter because that if any any answer would give you the same radius, and which then you compare it. So would that be <coughs> any anything will do? I so you have to just choose one. Yeah, yeah. And one comment about finding the global uh, minimum, Ma maximum, or maximum in terms of the density. Yeah. So there are uh, Mich uh, Michael Engel when he tried to find the density stacking of tetrahedron, like the, so so far the, most, the known dimer configuration. He uh, also came up with an algorithm which he coined 
quick compress. Basically, what you do is instead of um, so, so it seems like in terms of how you describe your code that once they're in contact, you don't compress it even uh, any any further. But what he did, what he did is basically he allows a little bit of overlap between the particles, and then tries to find um, a, a, a configuration where you can then resolve these overlaps and okay. again, and that helps to overcome like oh, many of these jamming. Okay. Jamming configurations that he that that, that are often prevent you to go to even higher density. So I think um, using using a similar mechanism there could help you uh, okay. significantly to get out get, get out of these kind of jam configurations. Okay. There. Yeah. So um, essentially, uh, what uh, we have been using to get out of this jam configuration was uh, this shaping algorithm. The, Consists of uh, just random perturbation, and many times it really unlocks. Uh, I, I show you the three thousand square, three thousand circles that was unlocked by simply shaking a large number of times the configuration. It did actually uh, find the, the the much better solution. I want it just to let's. Uh, I do see the supplemental uh, you have to come out screen the PDF. Okay, uh, let me do Okay, I want you to show the supplemental. These are all uh, supplemental material. I don't want to, to overwhelm you with, uh, with figures, but I want you just to show something that I I consider it would be nice, maybe it's trivial. Yeah, can I do it? Okay, yeah. So, here, uh, what I wanted to show is kind of trivial, but uh, when you have these kind of Voronoi diagrams, actually the square become uh, neutral because in this, in this diagram, the square. This green, uh, these green region are squares, well, squares, quadrilateral, curved quadrilateral, but they have two borders. So actually, the topological charge of each of these uh, domain is zero. And uh, if you had, if you punch more holes in these domains, you would lower the total topological charge. So it could be interesting to to look at what kind of patterns of Voronoi diagram in the Voronoi diagrams you have in this kind of uh, multiply connected domains. In a sense, this is a sort of a binary package. It's a sign of the whole, the whole in the set. Yeah, right? but you have only one. I agree. <laughs> but it's very <laughs> okay. very limited. Uh, but as you punch more holes in the domain. Um, yeah, but one one degree of freedom with what well, one dimension will be dynamical, the other one not. Sure, sure. So they will be sure. one other thing is that in principle you could think of some uh, giving some dynamics to the container as well. As long as you no, know, you you could think of a container that adapts and has some kind of flow and yeah. That was good one. I have uh, in the I have a supplemental file not here because it was too fast. But I in the presentation there were some trivial the trivial configuration for the collateral. Yeah, yeah. which was relevant between the trivial. Uh, yeah, th those ones you can find it in a paper by uh, Graham and Wachowski. I think it's ninety. End of 1990, I don't remember exactly, but I can look uh, yeah. up or maybe. You said 2004. Okay, 2004. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'm confusing with the experiments I want to find. So, in that case, I'm, I remember that they found nine families of, uh, of uh, recurring patterns. Okay. I did some exploration with the hexagon and I did find some families in the hexagon, but I didn't do it. So deeply as 
as they did it. So I need symbol saying this. Family in the sense that you have some kind of pattern that reproduce, like for example, triangle uh, uh, in the triangle, you have uh, triangle, you have this perfect triangular packing, and then you uh, you you have another triangular uh, number and you still have triangular packing and so on and so forth. There are other patterns. For example, remember one in which you have the higher portion of your triangle, almost all with the perfect triangular packing. And the bottom, like a zigzag, okay? So you will hit another special number and you will get a larger uh, configuration with the very same bottom and a larger number of triangular packing. So it's some kind of replica that you say. Okay, now let's thank our speaker once more. Yeah, most of it's three day until four PM. And then Kai, you have your PD we're gonna just say. So I would like to encourage you to all play with voice because yeah. they'll be featured in a talk and then I'm taking off shortly now. Okay, okay. So now's the chance. So so